Welcome to Win Souls TV. This is your host, Jeff Thomas. And today, ha, I got my little buddy. You know, I see a lot of YouTubers. They on YouTube. They showing off their families, okay? This is my homie right here. Shake. Give me some. Oh, yeah. That's a good baby. Give me some more. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Up high. Give me some. Oh, you see that? So it said, let me know that your dog can do something like that, okay? You know what I'm saying? Right. I can see you, buddy. See? Okay. So, yeah. Good job, buddy. So, today, we just want to talk about not just being on fire for God, but we want to talk about the state of Christianity. And I know that I've really been harping on this a lot lately concerning Black Lives Matter and the stance we should take with that, um, concerning being awake when a lot of us are dead, concerning uh, walking into churches and, you know, the church is dead, you're preaching dead messages, you you, you preaching uh, flattery in terms of not preaching the truth of repentance, forgiveness, all of these things, uh, and where you're going to go if you don't receive Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about uh, a fire and brimstone church, but what I am talking about is telling the people truth. You see what I'm saying? Um, and this is not a knock on a lot of different pastors, but there are pastors that will tell you some stuff that just seems okay to just appease your, your feelings because they don't want you to leave the congregation. There are pastors that have um, allowed themselves to be seduced so much by receiving money and receiving uh, praises and allowing themselves to um, be looked at as, as someone that is high up and uh, loving being put on a pedestal and being um, made an idol to the point where they have compromised the word of God and slowly but surely they have led the body of Christ away from where the Lord would like for them to be. And there comes a time where we have to realize, hey, stop being a baby in Christ and actually grow out of the passion of desire and wanting to get to know him right that's that's one key point you know all of the things that you know a lot of the people that that are have strong relationships with the Lord it began out of a passion and if it didn't begin begin out of passion there had to be some type of strike um, some type of uh, atmosphere to where it rubbed them the wrong way to where they started seeking the Lord and then there are those that just began to seek the Lord out of nowhere. But what you will begin to realize is that a lot of the strong Christians will fight for the weaker Christians. And that is the point of today's message. Don't be flattered by the things of the world. The cars, the dogs, you know what I'm saying? He's licking my hand right now. The puppies, the houses, your family, you know, all of the things that we can take pride in. Don't be flattered by those things because those things can be taken away in the snap of a finger. You can ask Job about that. OK, but. Rest in the Lord and understand who he is and have a desire for what he has for you. OK, and you will begin to develop this passion that is literally a fire. And then when you see people struggling out on the street, you'll want to help them. And you'll want to fight for them. You'll want to pray for them. When you see uh, deceptive things on TV to where a lot of believers are being blinded because they've allowed themselves to succumb to the things of the world. You'll be able to recognize it and you'll be able to fight for the freedom of those that are in bondage. You will be able to fight for the freedom of those that are in regions of captivity. You will be able to fight for those who have had parts of their souls fat fragmented through, uh, through trauma, molestation, rape, all of these specific things, all of these things. So how about we actually begin to develop a heart for the Lord and a heart for our brothers and sisters and begin to fight? Begin to fight. And when I say fight, I'm talking about spiritual warfare. OK, the state of the world right now is in need of us. They need us. Why? Because we bring the kingdom of heaven on this earth. 
We bring the kingdom of heaven on this earth. There is no one else. It's us. We are releasing the power of God here. And if all of us have allowed our saltiness to become nothing, then we it's, it's almost like we're worse than the world. Because the world just doesn't know. They sin out of not knowing. But we know. And we're just allowing things to just happen. We're not willing to fight. We're not willing to labor in prayer. We're not willing to do anything. We have all of these pastors that have all of this great worship music. All of these uh, great buildings. Uh, they, they are known in the world, you know. Um, and not saying all of them, but some of them have fallen away from releasing the power of God. Why? Because it's almost as if people won't come to your church if you're not talking about the things that they want to hear. People won't come to your church if you start talking about deliverance. People won't come to your church if you start talking about spiritual warfare because they don't want to know that reality. They want to know this little nice, little, little house on the prairie, God, that a lot of these churches are preaching. Which is why we have weak Christians. We have weak Christians because they, th those realities are not being known. We are treating this Bible as if it's just a good little adventure book that we can take adventures out of and use as examples of things that we can accomplish without God. But there is a time where we need to begin to rise up, really believe the things in the word, because look, if you don't walk out of it, then you really don't believe it. You really don't believe it. OK. So it is it, there is a time where we have to rise up and begin to believe the things in the word. There is a time where we have to see the things in the word. No, no matter how outlandish they, they, they may seem or illogical, they may seem because we're just trying to think with our brains rather than our spirit or our mind that has been submitted to God. It's time for us to embrace the spiritual realities of the things in the heavenlies that we are fighting against. And we need to be violent with it. We need to be violent because the violent, the kingdom of heaven suffereth. And the violent take it by force. OK. Angels and demons are fighting in the second heaven right now. What are we going to do about it? If angels hearken to the voice of the Lord. And we have the Lord living on the inside of us and they respond to our prayers. And most of us are dead. Then guess what? That's a problem. That's a problem. We have the great responsibility of unleashing glorious ferocity into this world. Let's begin to labor in prayer. Let's begin to learn how to fight. OK, and these are some of the books. This one's called Spiritual Realities. By Harold Eberl. I'll put all of these in this in the, in the description box below. Um, Larson's book on spiritual warfare. OK. Spiritual warfare by, by uh, Dr. Carl Payne. OK. Regions of Captivity by Anna Mendez, Pharaoh. Destroying Fear by John Ramirez. OK. And here's another book uh, in, in the spiritual realities um, thing by uh, Harold e Eberl or Eberl. Um, Pigs in the Parlor. 
A Practical Guide to Deliverance by Frank and Ida, Ida Mae Hammond. The, this is a classic right here. You may want to go and get your hands on it. If the Lord has called you to a deliverance, I mean, to a, um, to a lifestyle of deliverance, which he has called all of us to. Okay, because listen, the word tells us that these things will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues and the rest of the verse. Okay, so deliverance is for all of us. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't cast out demons or that is not for Christianity today. Where in the word does it tell us that any of that stuff is true? God says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are, we need to make that a reality everywhere that we go. Every step that we take and every person that we shake hands with, every everything needs to be centered around the narrow path that we are walking on. And our calling. And our discipleship. And our love for Jesus Christ and our love for our brothers and sisters. Okay? Possessing the Gates of the Enemy by Cindy Jacobs, okay? Binding the Strong Man Over America by Dr. John Benefile. And Understanding Spiritual Warfare by Paul Rhodes Eddy, okay? I'll put these in the description box below. You guys be blessed, be ready to fight, be equipped, because I'm telling you, when this world, because this world is not going to get any better. It's going to continue getting worse. But what is going to continue getting better is our relationship with the Lord, if you so desire it. Be blessed.